right now, it definitely means that you are a lifelong learner and you're on the way to becoming one of our most enriching teachers. So we're here to talk about exactly what is MOOC all about and how they can support you into your careers. So let's start first of all. In a college, many of you might have done a distance learning course, say a master's in education or a master's in history through a distance learning course. Now, what is the difference there? You did not attend your classes. You had a structured curriculum and you were studying across and giving you exams. So the first distance learning course became into 1892 in the University of Chicago. And basically all the entire uh, interactions were happening through the postal services. Around 1990s and 2000, the internet came in and it came in, in a very big way. And therefore everything started happening online. Now in 2008, the first MOOC, that is massive open online course came into effect but it didn't take off. In 2011, Stanford came up with the first MOOC course on artificial intelligence. And we one lakh sixty thousand people enrolled for it. And after that, there was no looking back. So let me tell you exactly right now the situation as per the statistics in 2017. Around 800 universities are offering 9,400 courses on MOOC platforms. And there are 81 million MOOC subscribers. And these numbers are increasing. Every year, around 20 million people are joining in. So our own India itself has a MOOC platform called a Swayam. Now Swayam is offering 2,150 courses taught by 1300 instructors from over 135 Indian universities. So this is what MOOC is all about and let's understand why MOOC. First of all, let's take this page. If I show you here, this is your interactive learning environment. Now every MOOC course will have very strong content. It's going to have assessments. It's going to have some sort of instructions and it's going to have a community of learners. Now, along with that, this community of learners is very, very important because what do you see here? You see that the community of learner has learner backgrounds. Now, in a single MOOC course, see, let's take the artificial intelligence course that happened, 1,60,000. There were people from all over the globe. The people from Russia, people from US, people from China, everywhere. So you had different learner backgrounds with different learning intentions. So maybe somebody just wanted to use this in the lesson plan. Somebody wanted to use as a career advancement. So everything had a different reason. Now you are engaging with that learner community continuously along with the respective instructions. Now, all this is happening on an online platform. So you're using technology. Now, this technology will be varied for different kind of MOOCs. So every time it's going to be a different platform. Your assessments will be in a different platform. So all of this is going to have a lot of learning empowerment here. Finally, after every MOOC gets over, they take feedback. And after every feedback, there's an improvement. And this improvement again adds on to your instructions. So look at what the learner is gaining. The learner is gaining instructions. The learner is gaining access to a lot of learner backgrounds. It's getting access, learners getting used to a lot of technology and all the time improving is happening. Now, let's understand why these MOOCs are so, so important. Now, first of all, when you do a MOOC, you have access to lots of teachers across the world. And the first thing that's going to happen is collaboration. Now, how is this collaboration actually going to happen? Let's say that we started a MOOC on inquiry-based learning. Now, you did inquiry-based learning and a definition is given to you. Say there's a lot of content and con uh, context. So it's something tells you that inquiry-based is a student-centered approach to engage, motivate and challenge students in active learning, whereby they discover meaning of newly attained knowledge 
and increase a deep understanding of encountering problems or issues that are solved. And then after that, you're even taught the entire process of, you know, inquiry-based learning, the entire steps of it. Now, this is the content. After every thing that they teach, there's an interactive platform where they'll ask you, after using this content, how are you going to apply into your learning? So if you have an IBL uh, entire project, they're going to say, how are you using IBL in your respective classrooms? Now, if I say out here that I'm going to be using IBL to make sure that I teach my students lesson on peeling of paints. Somebody in Romania is saying that I want to use this IBL process to make sure that how I teach students to test the freshness of eggs. Somebody in the US says I want to use IBL to make sure that how they work out a crime scene. Now sitting on that one particular place and you're collaborating, you have lessons of 100 other teachers at your fingertips. So I have just done a lesson on peeling of paints, but you have done something, somebody else has done something, and now sitting out here, I have access to around 100 lesson plans just ready for me. So this is how MOOC helps in complete collaboration. The next one, every MOOC will have, MOOC will have a webinar or a teach meet. Now, what is a webinar? It's basically where it's a platform, online platform, where you can ask your questions, an expert comes and talks about the respective topic. So you are getting all your doubts, everything cleared through a webinar. A teach meet is basically where maybe sometime a topic is given to you and lots of expert teachers come and contribute to that learning. Sometimes there are even people who make it as a motivational factor and ask you, um, to create something to come on a teach meet and share with other colleagues. So through this collaboration, you are actually enhancing not only your knowledge skills, but even your confidence, your speaking skills, all of the skills are coming into play out here. So webinars and a teach meet is definitely what is always happened. So webinars, basically you have a host and you have attendees all across. And all the time, you're getting everything clarified through that. Now, every MOOC will also have a lot of assignments. Now, these assignments, a lot of tasks will happen. Maybe you could have a detailed explanation asked about a respective topic for you to do. Maybe you could have a lot of research being asked. So if recently, when we did, I recently did a MOOC on three hours in animal science. Now you might be saying three hours might be reduce, reuse, recycle, but no, the three hours were reduction, refinement, replacement, which was the first time for me also. I never knew these three hours. Now, once I heard about these three hours and an animal use, they asked us, how are you going to use it into your own classrooms? So I had to actually research, do a lot of research into this three hours. So there's a lot of thorough research which happens. After that, it could be a case study which happens. Sometimes they ask you to do a capstone video, like National Geographic. When you did a certified course from there, they'll ask you to complete submit lesson plans. But at the end, they'll also ask you to create a capstone video. Now, a capstone video is whatever we're learning that you've done from the beginning till the end, capture it in a form of a video and show it to us. So you could have a capstone video, you could have a project, you could have a lesson plan. So you have all these aspects through which you're doing your respective assignments and projects. Now look at this. Don't you feel like a student yourself? When you're doing all of this, you exactly know what your students are experiencing. And you, are, you have so much more to share and give them. Then later on, another aspect of it is, every MOOC will have peer evaluation. Now in peer evaluation, what they do is, Suppose you have an assignment. An assignment is a lesson plan or maybe a giving capstone video. They will ask you to evaluate your colleague's capstone video or assignment too. Now in that assignment, they'll always have a format. There'll be a rubric and there'll be always to be followed by constructive feedback. So when you go to the format of the assignment and going to the rubrics, automatically when you start going to the rubrics, you realize 
you know, I could use this rubric in my own classroom. So this, therefore, not only you have the content, the context, the technology, but you also have a lot of assessment tools at your fingertips to be go back to go back to class and use them. Finally, after you've completed your entire MOOCs, they normally have a final exam or they could be having after every module a respective test. So you have the final assessments. Now the assessments could be a combination of tests, assignments, or even your online collaboration. So they have to be long basic make sure that you're doing this continuously. After every unit, a test, maybe a MCQ or maybe a submission, as I said, assignments, and in a collaboration, maybe some of the uh, MOOCs that have gone through, they have something called as a Padlet, where they ask a question and you have to give your responses and they're evaluating your responses. And at the end, they'll say that, you know, if you've completed this MOOC and got 70%, then you get a certification. And this certification is extremely, extremely important because what happens when you complete a MOOC? You have done something say a minimum learning of say three months you've done a topic you and your colleagues have the same topic the same content but when you go to class your examples will be unique because you have studied something different you have taken experiences of teachers across the world so you are going to have so much more to offer to your students and when you have that obviously you're going to be one of the best teachers the students are going to fall in love with you so you have definitely a lot of fan following from your students now when this talk goes out obviously you're going to become a team leader because people will want to know what is it that you are contributing to the class that they are not so you're becoming a team leader moreover when the certificates come and you have an appraisal you have to add this across it in your entire course of the year you have been doing these courses to make sure that you are becoming much more stronger in your academics so performance appraisal also it helps and fourth the most important you empowered yourself you're not just here you've gone beyond it and with every MOOC you're just going up 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 so and every learning no matter whether it, that learning is going to be used tomorrow or going to be used about 10 months later or maybe 10 years later learning is never lost learning always recreates itself so you have definitely empowered yourself. Now, two most things I hear is that when we do MOOCs, we don't have time or basically have gained anything. First of all, you have to make time. And right now with this 21 days, you cannot have an excuse that you do not have time. You definitely have time. So please, please make this use this time to ensure that when you go back to class, People just fall in love with you and the next thing is gaining first of all if I put 100% of myself somewhere I am going to gain something so first of all go with a very open mindset that I'm going to put 100% of myself in this and yes I will go ahead now I'm going to share with you a list of MOOCs that you can go in for MOOCs can be free MOOCs can be paid also but majority of the places which I'm going to offer you right now are all free some cases like edX or something, Coursera. If you want a certificate, then you have to pay for it. Otherwise, it's free. So I'm just wishing you that this entire 21 days, use this to empower yourselves and please share which MOOC have you used. I'll be loving to know it. Thank you so much.